Hi everybody, I hope that you're all doing really well. So today I am back to talk about two Greek myth retellings that I read recently. Not only are they both Greek myth retellings, but they are both retellings of the same figure. Both feminist retellings of Medusa, the terrifying gorgon with snakes for hair who was able to turn men into stone with just a glance, who may have first probably growing up knew as a horrifying figure and mainly saw as somebody that we were glad that Perseus had vanquished. But in these two retellings, Medusa by Jesse Burton and Stoneblind by Natalie Haynes, we are getting a much more sympathetic portrayal of Medusa, arguably a much more feminist retelling, very much on brand with many of the new retellings that we're getting of Greek mythology. And I thought it'd be interesting to look at both of these books kind of compare and contrast because they are both playing around with the mythology but doing very very different things I think. Natalie Haynes I think arguably sticks much closer to mythology whereas Jessie Burton kind of subverts it. I originally thought reading both of these might be a bit redundant but actually these are both very very different experiences. Starting off with Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes. I think I was definitely expecting Natalie Haynes to stick very closely to mythology. She's very well known as a classicist, fiction and non-fiction and I have enjoyed pretty much everything that I've read by her. Natalie Haynes also crams in a lot more in terms of character perspectives. Her timeline is a lot more stretched out and you know she has a lot more room to play with. Stoneblind is comparatively much much more of a chunky novel. We see the figure of Medusa being an ordinary girl who is actually adopted by Gorgons who she ends up growing up with on this deserted island but they are sister figures to her, Sveno and Uriale. There's this really lovely section where the two sisters are learning how to care for this infant Medusa and as all new parents they don't know what they're doing and they are initially when they find out they have to look after her they're kind of miffed about this but of course they do as they start to care more for her they start to really have a deep bond and love for her. The sisterhood between these three women is really strong and I would say it's the best part of this book. Their relationships with each other, the way that they speak to each other. There are moments of irritation as with any kind of sibling relationship but there is deep love but also with that deep love comes deep fear and Natalie Haynes's gods especially give them plenty to fear. I would say this book is much less focused on Medusa herself as a central figure and much more on the gods. How the gods of Greek mythology corrupt everything, how uncaring they are for anybody outside themselves, how selfish and vain they are. These are figures who do not know how to care and do not know how to love. Something that neither of these two books shy away from is how Medusa comes to become a Gorgon, how she comes to be cursed with snakes for her and having a killing gaze. Neither of these books shy away from the fact that this comes as a result of Poseidon's rape of Medusa and that this happens in the temple of Athena and because Athena cannot punish Poseidon she ends up punishing Medusa instead. And we do not see the sexual assault of Medusa Medusa happen. That is very much off page but we do see the lead up to it. We see the initial confrontation between Poseidon and Medusa and it is incredibly chilling and Natalie Haynes really sets this up to be very indicative of her general theme of this book of the gods not really loving anyone and not understanding love or sacrifice. The attack on Medusa being played out not as a surprise attack but as something that is more sacrificial. Poseidon threatening that if Medusa does not submit to his advances then Poseidon will go and do the same to some women who are standing outside and Medusa essentially sacrifices herself for these women and Poseidon sneers at her, he laughs at her because these women are strangers to Medusa, they don't know her, she doesn't know them and he basically cannot understand why she would sacrifice herself for women who would not thank her for it, who will never know what she has done for them. You're really seeing how these gods just have no notion of having compassion or empathy, of wanting to protect others, it is just such a foreign concept to them. Even Athena's revenge against Medusa is kind of just an afterthought. Athena upon realising that she could not possibly punish Poseidon, she just thinks to herself, the girl, the girl will do. No real thought, no concern, just I have to punish someone so it might as well be the weakest person here. As I say, I have seen complaints about this that Medusa is not a very central character within this. This book is very much about the events that are going around around Medusa's story and it's only at the end after she has died that we actually get a perspective of her. Medusa is decapitated but still able to kill with eyes, head, ends up getting a perspective and actually her personality is completely changed once she is killed. She becomes much more vengeful, once again echoing how the gods could wrote everything. Medusa, who had been so meek and mild but incredibly compassionate, has now just been filled with a lust for revenge. And I feel like that is kind of the point. I understand being disappointed at not getting much more of a solo perspective from Medusa herself, but I do feel like this book is successful in what it is trying to do in this critique of the Greek gods. I really enjoyed this. It has Natalie Haynes' like trademark, very dry, sarcastic sense of humour. I feel like there is a lot of respect for the original myth, but she does kind of play around with things a little bit. I wouldn't say that this is my favourite Greek myth 
telling of all time but it's definitely quite high up there and I generally find that with Natalie Haynes her Greek myth retellings are never my absolute favorites but I've also never been disappointed by any of them either and they always leave me with an interesting new perspective to think about however if you were craving a bit more of a focused perspective on Medusa then Jesse Burton's offering might be more for you I should point out there is definitely an audience difference between the two books Stoneblind definitely being more of an adult book whereas this is marketed very much as YA so as a result Jesse Burton's Medusa doesn't quite go into the level of darkness that I would argue that Natalie Haynes does but I feel like this would be a pretty good primer to Greek myth if you've never read it before if you are a bit younger and wanting to kind of dip your toe into Greek myth retelling though what I will say about this one is that this one does play around a lot more with the narrative and this happens right from the get-go because the premise surrounding this book is that Perseus and Medusa do actually meet and they actually have a sustained relationship before Perseus realizes that he has got to kill her but before we get to that point what we end up having is this really lovely discussion between the two characters characters especially focused on the different expectations for men and women in this society. They both bond over expectations that are leveled at them by other people and both of them feeling trapped in their respective circumstances but the main thing that Medusa really pushes Perseus to understand is that it's much much harder for her to thrive as a girl than it is for Perseus as a boy. There's a lot of discussion particularly of Perseus's mother and comparison being made between the treatment of Perseus's mother by Zeus and then Medusa's by Poseidon. However because we know how this mythology is meant to play out as the book progresses you just have this like underlying like nervousness and anticipation of when is the other shoe going to drop when are they going to realize what is going to happen so when Jesse Burton does end up subverting the ending to this book it is genuinely surprising I personally didn't expect it and I'm not sure where I land on whether or not I like her ending Medusa in this book is much more active and vocal than she is in Natalie Haynes version but I do confess I do like how Natalie Haynes just kind of move with rather than moving against the original mythology but then and arguably Jessie Burton's Medusa is much more feminist and her ending is probably the ending that I think a YA audience would want to have and I do not mean that in a patronizing way but I do think it's more uplifting and I don't begrudge people at all for wanting a more uplifting ending. In comparison there is much more of a somberness to Natalie Haynes retelling that is harsh and it's cruel but it also kind of feels more real to me. In terms of perspectives because this all takes place on the one island you really feel trapped with these characters in comparison to Natalie Haynes where there is a lot more movement, many more perspectives, it feels a lot more fleshed out but I feel like for what both of these books were trying to do they manage it successfully. I'd probably say in the end this book is probably the one that I would recommend a little bit more but I do really appreciate the Jesse Burton and I feel like especially for a younger audience this would be really compelling. What I will say for this is that I do have the paperback edition and there was originally a really gorgeous hard back that was illustrated throughout and I've been told by my sources that the illustrations really do enhance the reading experience. I feel like it would have added a bit more of an extra impact for me so if you can find a copy of the hardcover then I would definitely recommend it. But yeah I feel like my venture into these two different Medusa retellings was actually very successful. I felt like I was going to come out with a much stronger feeling of one being better than the other or horror of horrors I wasn't going to particularly like either of them. I don't know I, I'm glad to have like good thoughts on both of them. Do let me know if you've read these two retellings retellings, what you thought of them, I would love to hear from you. I hope you're having a fantastic, fantastic day and I look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks. Bye!